All right, now let's take a look at factorization by multiplication frame. Before we apply multiplication frame, we need to check our question and see whether we can actually apply multiplication frame for the question. So two criteria that we need. First of all, we must make sure that there are three terms in this question. right? And uh, the next thing that we want to check is uh, we do not have a common factor for all the three terms okay for at least one of the terms so for example let's say i want to take out common factor x okay i have common factor x here i have common factor x here but i don't have common factor x here so i cannot factorize by common factor okay or let's say i want to take out common factor 5 i do not have common factor 5 here i do not have common factor 5 here that's why i cannot use common factor so Right. So two criteria before we can apply the multiplication frame. First, it must have three terms. One, two, three. Next, it do not have any common factors for at least one of the terms. Okay, so we, we can observe here there's no common factor for at least one of the terms here. So that's the criteria before we can actually use multiplication frame. Now the next thing is uh, how do we draw the multiplication frame? Okay, uh, it looks like a fish. So when we draw it, it looks something like this. Okay, so this looks like a fish, right, with the two tails here. Or sometimes you can call this the window, okay, whatever it is. Uh, basically, it's just a frame, okay, with four boxes and two tails coming out. Okay, now on this multiplication frame, we'll write a multiply here. To signify that we are multiplying this term with this term right and the next thing that we are going to do we'll focus on these two boxes here okay we're going to put the first term as well as the last term inside the boxes right so what we're going to do now is we're going to put the x square in the first box i'm going to put the plus six in the last box now in multiplication frame the sign is very important so whether it's a positive sign or whether it's a negative sign, okay, we need to indicate it on the question itself. <clears throat> okay, next we will decide uh, what multiplied by what will give us x squared. Okay, so a very obvious choice will be x multiplied by x. Okay, so this will give us x squared. This one is very easy. Okay, then for the six, okay, we'll look at different factors of six. 6 is actually equals to 1 times 6 or 2 times 3. Okay, let's say we don't know what the answer is. Then what I'll do is I'll just try two of the numbers. Okay, so I can just try positive 1 and I'll try positive 6. Okay, so now we will need to obtain the values inside the box here. So 1 times x will give us x same thing 6 multiplied by x will give us 6x okay. what we'll do now is we want to check whether the sum of these two values will be the same as the middle value okay so 6x plus x is it equals to 5x it's not right 6x plus x is 7x so which means to say our choice of 1 and 6 is not correct we need to change it. All right, so now let's erase them. Okay, so 1 and 6 is not the correct choice, are not the correct choice. So what we'll do now is we'll try 2 and 3. Again, we'll do the same thing. We'll write plus 2 here, and we'll write plus 3 here. Okay, do our multiplication. 2 times x, it will give us 2x. 3 times x, it will give us 3x. Right. Then we check again. 3x plus 2x, is it equals to 5x? It is, right? Okay. So this will give us the answer. So the result for x squared plus 5x plus 6 will be equals to x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 3. Okay. We write this down. Okay, so this will give us the answer. Are you clear about this? Right. 
Now, let's take a look at another example. So over here, we will do the same thing. We will draw our multiplication frame first. Right, so we'll draw the multiplication frame. We'll start off with a times. Okay, I'll put in the first term here, x squared, and I'll put in the last term here, negative six. Right, same thing. We'll ask ourselves, what times what will give us x squared? So x times x. Okay, now this time it's a negative six. So there's a variety of choices, right? So negative six, we can have a few choices. One times negative six, okay? Negative one times six, right? Two times negative three, or negative two times three, okay? Four choices, right? So we may need to try one by one Okay, and uh, if really is that bad, then we have to go to the last one. But okay, so let let's try the first one first. So plus one, okay, M minus six, okay. All right. So one times x we will get x. One times x times negative six we will get negative six x. Right. Our objective is to get plus five. Okay. So negative six plus x does it give us plus five? No, right. Okay. So this is out, this first choice is out, this is wrong, okay. Alright, then let's try the other possibilities. Okay, so negative 1 and 6, so negative 1, positive 6, right? So again, same thing, negative 1 times x, negative x, positive 6 times x, plus 6x, right? 6x minus x, does it give us 5x? Yes, right? So this means this is the correct choice. And uh, we need not continue with the remaining two choices. So now our answer will be x squared plus 5x minus 6 will be equals to x minus 1 multiplied by x plus 6. Okay, from here, x minus 1, x plus 6. So are we clear about this?